I wanted to make this video because there's so much confusion out there right now and I have got a few good sources here that I want to bring to you so that you've got a clear picture of where we are right now. I don't think, I think people <clears throat> think they're taking it seriously by going out and buying all the toilet paper and all the food and everything. But that is not the way we need to be taking it seriously. Um, let, let me just start with this. Um, as of March 15th, that's today, the epidemic was reported to be present in 49 of the 50 states. I suspect Alaska <laughs> might be our state that it's not at. Uh, plus the District of Columbia. The number of confirmed cases in the U.S. is at 3,326 with 63 deaths. Uh, of course, by now, you've watched the news. You know that the president has declared a national emergency. And probably the governor of whatever state you lived in, you live in, has declared a state of emergency. You've also probably been hearing some words a lot lately. Those words are going to be social distancing, containment, mitigation. And I'm going to explain to you what all those words mean in relationship to state of emergencies. Look at it in phases. Look at it in three phases. See, state of emergencies. Now, now we all know uh, that when we're in a state of emergency, it gives the power to the government uh, powers that they don't normally have. They're empowered to, here we go, empowered to perform actions or impose policies that would no, not normally be permitted to undertake. Uh, governments declare state of emergencies during national disasters, medical pandemics, si uh, civil unrest, and armed conflict. Um, such declarations alert the citizens to change their normal behavior. to alert the citizens to change their normal behavior and orders the government agencies to implement emergency plans. And so it, there's, there's funds that get dispersed and there's, but, but basically that's the first step. The federal, state, and state governors issue state of emergencies. So look at it in three phases. You've got phase one, you've got phase two, and you've got phase three. We are in phase one now. This is the initial, they've declared state of emergencies. They've said, hey, everybody, you need to do social distancing. We're asking you not to go to concerts. We're asking you not to uh, go to events. And depending on where you are is the amount of people at the event. Kansas City is 1,000, which is way too much. Um, I know some other cities are 500, some are 250. But they're asking you to quit bunching up in places altogether where you're really close. You know, at a concert, you're right there with people. They're asking you to, you know, stay home a little bit. You know, right now, everybody's being real nice about it. Real nice about it. They're, they're politely asking you and giving you the opportunity to take the responsibility yourself to step back. Because here is what they know right now. They know that... It can't be stopped. They know that it can be leveled off. I'm sure you have possibly heard them say, flatten the curve. So right now, the goal is to flatten the curve. And we know how to do this. South Korea did it amazingly. Now, China has done it as well. And we'll get to more of how they did that after I 
explain a little bit more about the phases and what they mean. Okay, so phase one, national emergency or state of emergency has been declared. Everybody needs to kind of chill out and, you know, distance yourself from large crowds. And as phase one progresses, because everything goes in in it's a slow process you know the government is not going to come in and go bam shut everything down everybody would flip the hell out at the beginning of phase one they said I heard it myself from CDC from many 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 government officials you need to have two weeks of food they're saying two weeks each. Some say one week. Some say two weeks. You need to have two weeks of food. And the, and this, you need to have two weeks of food turned into everybody going to the store and buying a year's worth of food at one time, which is extremely selfish and extremely unresponsible. So they've been saying, hey, you need, you know, you need to get some food. You need to have about a week to two weeks worth of food. Now you're seeing schools close. You're seeing libraries close. You're seeing non-essential facilities close. Phase one. So as we slowly progress, and you know, these, these steps go on a few days. You, you'll notice nothing happens, bam, right now. Okay, so this week all the schools are going to close and the libraries and all that shit you know last week we started getting the news i did because i have a college student we started getting the news that the campuses are closing um you know and, and at first it was like well we're going to close till the 23rd and now we're getting more emails that no we're going to close the semester because they know this is going to take time. This is going to take time. Okay. So we've got non-essential facilities closing, schools, libraries, blah, blah, blah. We've got social distancing. We've got the request for social distancing. As we are getting into the middle of phase one, we are hearing a lot of, look, if you're sick, stay home. So whether there's going to be funding available, you know, another thing about when state of emergencies are invoked, it does release funds. It releases funds to the states and local governments. So, you know, that'll remain, there's no guarantee you're going to get paid for being off at this, at this point. There is none. Um, but they're asking you to self quarantine if you're sick. And, and the reason they're doing that is because the hospitals are becoming inundated. We're going to, you know, it's been predicted that we will lose 10% of our hospital workers, which is going to make the fact that everybody and their brother is going to the hospital even worse. So unless you are having a hard time breathing, okay, pains in your chest because um, I've had pneumonia three times so I can tell you all about pneumonia um, it hurts to breathe I mean you trust me you want to die you just want to die you don't even care it, it's so it's it makes you feel so horrible that you you just want to die so unless you are there Unless you are at that point, stay home, self-quarantine. Uh, you know, your fever gets over, what, 104, 103, 104, something like that. Definitely go to the hospital. But they're saying treat the fever, make sure you've got, make sure you've got some Tylenol uh, or things that are going to help you lower that fever. Um, you, you may have to sit in a cool tub. I mean, you know, I've done that with a kid. It, it works. So this is all happening in phase one. We're about in the middle of phase one right now. Just saw the Prez on TV about five, ten minutes ago. And he's evidently hobnobbed with all the CEOs of the major uh, grocery outlets. And uh, 
they're going to start limiting. You know, you're not going to be able to come in. You're going to see a lot of you can buy two type of things, quantity of two only type of things on on certain products. So, um, and you know that they're. I know our Walmart in Cameron is only going to be open from 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. Uh, because at that time they're going to disinfect the store every day. Uh, this is a costly thing. This is a very, very costly thing to these big companies. Um, so, so you know, nobody's taking this lightly, but they've got to settle everybody down because the people have just gone bananas. So now they're reining in and going, okay, you know, because there is no apocalypse happening. We are not all going to die. In fact, a lot of you watching this video right now might not even get sick or get that sick. Um, me, on the other hand, if I get it, I'm really going to have to watch it for the pneumonia. <laughs> if you've had pneumonia before, you are susceptible to get it again. Have heart disease, heart disease, lung disease, kidney disease, you are highly susceptible. If you have an autoimmune disease, you are highly susceptible. Um, if you are taking chemo, um, if you have any kind of um, Im suppressed immune system, you are highly susceptible to getting the pneumonia and getting the acute respiratory disease syndrome. So you need to watch for that and you need to be wary of that. And here's the whole thing, you know, even if you're not the one that gets sick, you may make someone sick that is the one to get that sick. So that's what, that's what you need to keep in mind. But as we go towards the end, and, and this is a real, here's the other thing about these phases, and here's what we want to watch um, over the next week or so. Whenever the phase starts, they take it slow and they see, okay, what's happening? Because right now while we're in phase one, they are going to narrow in on the blooms, on the many epicenters that we're going to get around our state. Right now, it is not in my county. And if we all follow Nana's advice, it won't get into our county. And if you don't have it in your county, you can keep it from getting in your county. But what the state's doing is it's narrowing in on, okay, boom, here's, here's a pin, here's a pin. Um, they do their devil best to then take that case and bubble it and encompass it to, you know, who contacts information, um, who have you been around. They then isolate those people. Uh, they go into self-quarantine and they may not even be contagious, but it doesn't make any difference. Boom, they're done. Because here's the other reality. There are not enough tests. It's not happening. Everybody's not going to have the luxury of getting a test, which brings you back to them asking you not to even come to the hospital unless you have to. Um, anyway, so right now they're doing that. St. Louis is one. Springfield is one. Um, across state line in Kansas, Overland Park is one. Um, so they're going to try to contain that burst as much as they can. Highly important because the less chances, the, the, the less of a chance of it spreading outside of that bubble, the better the rest of the state is. Um, I, you know, <laughs> and we'll get to this in a minute. I, you may start not being able to cross state lines eventually, but we'll get to that anyway. So that's where we are. As we see this phase progress, we'll see businesses start to close. So, you know, the restaurants will probably be among the first because these are where people gather. Um, your grocery stores, 
and your gas stations and things of that nature will be among the last. Um, we're already seeing corporations willingly uh, taking it upon themselves to say, hey, all of our people work from, from home until further notice. This rolls us over into phase two. Phase two is when they start shutting stuff down. Phase two is when the when they say, okay, uh, they're not going to maybe shut the grocery stores down quite yet, but maybe they're going to shut, start shutting gas stations down. And it may be a situation of only some of the gas stations get shut down. I mean, the fact of the matter is, once the governor issued a state of emergency, he can shut the gas stations down anyway. So, you know, <laughs> that's why I said they get that taken care of right off the bat. So anyway, the purpose of doing this is to, is there's a couple of reasons for doing this. Social distancing, people gather in close quarters. You know, it may be that uh, places like Quick Trip, the store shuts down, but they continue selling gas. Pay at the pump only. I mean, it could very, they can very easily keep the gas flowing uh, and still shut a store down. And now that's going to leave a lot of people out of work. Okay. So now you've got people that are home. And so you've got people that aren't working and a lot of people that aren't working. So as they move into phase two, they're going to start saying, they're going to start taking this social distancing thing a little further and they'll go, you know, no social, no people gathering, period. None. We want, we want you to stay in your house. You know, it's going to be real nice at first. They're going to be like, we need you to stay home. We need you to work from home. Only essential things getting done, you know, type of thing. And, uh, you know, all these people aren't working anyway. So they're going to put people at home and, you know, the, if the prez, uh, was really nice, he maybe, you know, he's already mentioned that there might be a, uh, stimulus package being released. Um, so it could be that people get assistance. You've already gotten your, uh, note from the, uh, electric company. I got one. Everybody get got one, I'm sure, that says, hey, we're not going to shut you off. Um, you know, it's all part of preparing to get to this point, okay? You you do bits and pieces. We sent out a note. Okay, so the, basically the government told the electric companies you can't shut people off. They're not going to be open to shut you off anyway. Okay? So, Everybody's set up to quarantine. So now as we go into the end of phase two, the government is saying, we need you to stay home. We need you to stay home for, could be one week. It could be two weeks. We need you to stay home. Don't go anywhere. They're going to, then, then over the next week or so, a couple days to a week, they're going to watch what people do. Okay, they're going to watch what people do and, and see if people take their advice that they've asked so nicely for you to do. Um, hopefully we'll never see phase three. South Korea and China went to phase three. Um, but uh, by damn it, they had to, they stopped it because here's what i seen with China. Okay, so phase three is martial law. Phase three is the government saying, okay, twice now we've asked you nicely to do these things. You obviously are not getting it. So I declare martial law. You will stay home. Uh, you know, curfews will be in place. Um, you know, they're going to put the hammer down. Everything will be closed. Nobody will be working. No supplies will be shipping. Nothing. 
nothing. Only automated services will be going, which most of your amenities, electricity, water, internet, TV, most of them are automated. Um, so you'll be in the comforts of your own home, you know, but they're not going to let you leave your home. And they can legally enforce those laws as well. You martial law means there will be people patrolling the streets and making sure your ass is in the house. Um, you know, people can be arrested for being out and about. Um, and this is what happened in South Korea. And this is also what happened in China. We saw the, that stuff in a lot of videos, I know. And the people that were being put to the ground and being arrested were people that were violating the martial law. Okay. And uh, you know what? <laughs> you flatten their curve. Um, I suspect there will be areas, if, if we were to get to phase three, I suspect there will be areas in the United States that we will see things like that. I don't expect that in my area. Um, I live in a rural area. No problem. We'll all stay home. No big deal. The cities, though, your big cities, that's where you're going to see problems. But, it, but even if we get to phase three, it's still not that big of a deal. And I know it sounds like it is, but it isn't. It really is not. Because if you had a week's worth of groceries, I advise two weeks, sit home and write it out. Write it out. Nobody needs to go anywhere. Write it out. Right now, as we are in the early stages of phase one, if you can stay home and ride this out, do it. You will probably never get sick from this stuff if you just stay home and ride this out. I know a lot of us can't do that right now, um, which is, un it's kind of bad because the, the longer we stay in these lower phases, the more chances of this virus taking hold in our state. And that that's the truth of the matter. And I'm no fan of martial law. I mean, I'm not saying, you know, the man and all that shit, but it is the reality. The more we don't listen right now, when they're asking us nicely to freaking do something, the more we don't listen, the more time that virus has to take hold. So if you can stay home, stay home. Now, do you need 20 pounds of toilet paper? I doubt it because you know, it's okay. It's not going to last forever. Okay. It, you know, a month's more than enough. Have at least a week or two. Same with food. Have a week or two. Because we don't know how far into this it's going to take us. We don't know. And, and we don't know because we're relying on how the people react to this situation. Okay? And then the people are you and the people are me. So if you just stay home, you know, stay home if you can. Even if you have to go to work, then go home and stay home, okay? Quit. Don't go to the bars. Don't go to restaurants. Don't go to movies. Um, keep your shopping to a minimum. Um, Amazon is still going. You know, buy from their food. They'll deliver it right to your door. My son shops for his groceries that way. Um Take advantage of it while that is still in effect because, you know, soon we're going to be losing those services. But even if you have to go to your local grocery store, go. Get your things. Get out. You know, leave some for somebody else. I think there's still time. I think there is still time that if you do go 
and stock up a little. Okay, now, now think about what a week or two weeks is. It's really probably no more than you buy anyway. I know I buy for two weeks every grocery trip, plus whatever I buy for my stores. Um, normal food, what you would buy anyway. Do keep in mind that there's a chance if you were to run out of something, it may be a while before you'll be able to get it. Keep that in mind. So, you know, pay attention to your grocery list and what you get added on there. You don't, This is not the time you want to forget something. You may not get another chance to get it for a minute. Um, right now, while they're asking nicely, I hope that we gain hold over this sucker during phase one doesn't have to get pretty much any worse or much worse than it's getting now um i hope we don't even see phase two let alone phase three but here's the reality you need to be prepared for phase three okay even though phase three may never come you don't know Nobody knows. The government does not even know. All the government knows is it's prepared to take action through the phases as it needs to. That's all the government knows. And what the government and the government's decisions to do that is going to be based on the people. And based on how they are reacting, are they are they heeding the words of la of local and state governments in the fat in you know, social distancing and all the things they're asking us nicely to do right now, okay? You don't have any idea where this is going, okay? You don't. I mean, there could be people sitting in a room right now planning to release Phase 2 Thursday morning. You don't know without any care about what the situation is immediately around them so you don't know so you need to be prepared for you know you're dealing with decisions made by other people so that so you need to be in control where you are in control so I just need to get that out there because I just don't think people understand you know everybody's out going crazy at the store. I mean, the stores are empty. FEMA has been asking you for years, if not decades, to have three to six months stored away. Okay? It's not like the government hasn't told you over and over again to cover your ass because no one realizes how fragile Everything is. Nobody does. Remember the DHS report I released a couple of years ago that you can freely get publicly as a PDF and read the DHS security summary to the president. Advise people have six months because we are so susceptible to a grid down situation. And that won't come gradually. If that happens, Boom, it's going to happen right now. So so this emergency that we're having right now is a perfect test and a perfect lesson to everybody because, you know, it, it's moving gradually. It's moving slowly. It is moving quickly in a sense, but, you know, it's not like you wake up, the lights are out, and you're done. We're, we've got time to act. We've still got time to act, and we've still got time. You know, if two six-packs of toilet paper will do you for the next week or two, then that's all you need to buy. You don't need to buy a case of it. You know, if, if two large bottles of Purell will do you for the next one to two weeks, then just buy two. Okay? You don't need to go crazy. You need to step back and you need to pay attention. You need to be thinking 
about what they're asking you to do nicely because if if you don't if you don't get your act together now you're gonna take it to the point to where they're not asking you nicely nobody wants to be there so I hope you take responsibility for yourself I hope you take the responsibility for those around you in doing your part to keep this from going out of control because it, it is so so there it can it can happen but not if we do what we need to do you know the, the CDC right now let's see that today they updated their website I was on there today um, let's see there was yeah see okay so global F, uh, efforts are focused concurrently on lessening the spread and the impact so they're they're focused on flattening the curve um, federal governments are supposed to be working close with state and locals uh, CDC has implemented its pandemic preparedness and response plans uh, preparing communities to respond to local spreads of the virus uh, they have their pandemic guidance uh, you can go on their website go to pandemic preparedness resources it gives you uh, pandemic planning uh, Com community mitigation um, which is kind of where we are right now uh, the purpose of community mitigation is uh, incorporated lessons slowing the acceleration of the number of cases in the community so that's where we are right now it's all here it's all here all you have to do is get on the internet and 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 you know don't go to a news source go to the CDC go to the who um, go to Wikipedia go you know listen to some doctors listen to what they're saying um, you know people in infected areas you talk you hear their nurses because I have the last couple of days it's frantic it is absolutely frantic okay and you know right now it might not be where you are right now it's not where I am but if it gets here it's bad stuff you know that's what I think people in my area don't seem to get you talk to somebody who is in an area where this is at and it's a whole different story okay they know what's going on so so I want you to make sure that you're getting on the CDC website and you are seeing what they are saying that is important do what they're asking um, pay attention to your local town and see if they're having a meeting it could be that your state emergency management association is going to come into a town or to your town or maybe a town close to you maybe a larger town they're going to have meetings with citizens so that you have a chance to ask questions and you have a chance to have someone from emergency management tell you exactly where we are okay exactly where you are for your area um, so I encourage you to find that meeting or find some kind of event like that and go to it um, that's about all I have to say about it I hope you do what they're asking you to do I hope you get some food stocked away if you don't already um, I hope you're I hope you're prepared for your kids to be home um, I hope you're prepared for you to be home too um, you know what and the electric company is not uh, shutting you off right now so you know what don't pay that bill I mean if you got a situation to where uh, my electric bills do I'm only gonna have 20 bucks left you know screw the electric company you know keep that money do you, you take that two hundred dollars or whatever and go to the store and buy yourself a week's worth of food okay that's what you need to do you need to think about yourself right now and you need to be ready be ready to be closed up all right 
Um, that's all I got for right now. I appreciate you stopping by. Um, I hope you like and subscribe. I hope, you know, I didn't drone on too terribly long. I know I tend to do that. Anyway, I'm going to end this and uh, Nana prep out.